Hello there, Master Hellish here, and welcome back to Hellish Prints 3D. Now today, we're not going to actually be looking at printing, so to speak, but we're going to look at the way I'm going to be monitoring it. Now, I've got a funny feeling that this will change in the future. I'm still very new to this, and I'm just finding my feet with a lot of things. But I want to be able to see my prints as they're printing in real time from other locations other than staring at it right here here. And um, also, I want to be able to record time lapses. So, I figured, what can I do to be able to view and monitor this and not spend any money? Because I've bought the printer, I've bought my reels of material, I don't really want to buy anything else right now. Maybe it's an upgrade in the future. So, I had a look round and I had a think. And I realised that under this little um, kind of shelving unit here, just below here, um, is my hellish server. Now on the hellish server, we run games, because my main thing that I do is gaming. I do gaming channels and all that sort of stuff. But it's not the only thing. I mean, it, it holds data and it's got a couple of other functions as well. And I thought to myself, well, why can't I use this existing server that I've got literally beneath my printer to actually monitor the printer? And then I realised that I actually have a spare webcam. So it'd be a matter of setting the webcam in a position, connecting it to the server, doing some sort of software, and then... And, and then well, I can do it. I, I can monitor and, 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 and do a time lapse. It wasn't quite so straightforward. But for the most part, I've succeeded in what I was trying to do. There was a small amount of cost involved. And that was for this thing that you can see right here. This is a little LED light. Now, I did try and use some LED lights that I had lying around. I've done the LED um, strip lighting in this office. In fact, there's some just up here in the top of the shelf. I'm turning it on and off now. So there was a little bit left over from that. But the down lighting from that just didn't work very well. It interfered with the frame of the printer and cast its shadows on what I was trying to print. If I wanted some good lighting so I could see what I was uh, taking a video of and or pictures of, then I needed something that was very directional, something I could control the position of quite nicely. And this little reading slash camera mic thing does the job brilliantly. It's on a little bendy arm that just clips to the beam of the shelf at the back there. So I got my little spare webcam, popped it on a little tripod that I had lying around left over. I think I, I saw it online and it was a bargain at some point. I thought, one day that's going to be useful. And it is. Um, it has been in the past and it is now. I popped my little webcam on there and uh, jobs are good. So with the hardware all set up, I thought I was pretty much finished, but then came the software. So welcome to the Hellish server. Now it's on here that I run my games, you can see I've got some down here on the taskbar, but it's the time-lapse software that we've come to look at. Now I did download a piece of software, it was a, one of the most free recommended pieces of software, and it had lots of fantastic features. However, for some reason, it would not find my webcam. Now if we just use the camera app in Windows, we can see the webcam. You can actually see me in the background there, hello, at my computer on the other side. It was using this camera app that I was able then to set up the webcam in the position I want it. And I found this kind of off-centered, to one side, low-looking approach kind of gave the best sort of angle for looking at what I was trying to print. Looking directly side on or directly from the back, you didn't really get a good sense of the entire kind of print depending on the shape of what was being printed and higher up you didn't really get to see the actual nozzle doing its job. Now speaking of the nozzle, the nozzle is actually at the back of the extruding head, uh, not near the front, so which is one of the reasons why I decided to put the webcam at the back of the printer, not at the front. And usually when this is printing that cable's not really in the way either. So I was happy with this positioning and the lighting took a little bit to get right. I got that little LED light and I just um, put it directly in front of the camera with the little hole and the camera poking through the hole. Uh, unfortunately this didn't produce good video because we got direct shiny reflections off the surface back at the camera. But having the light slightly offset 
um, to one side, resolve that problem. No, no problem at all. It still gets little shiny bits, as you can see. We've got a little bit of reflection on the build plate there, but it's nowhere near as bad as it was. I'll probably tweak that in the future. So, with that first application, not noticing my webcam, I downloaded this one. This one is called Time Lapse, and it is much simpler. In fact, it's quite old. In fact, when you go to the help section, the website isn't even there anymore. So that's how probably old it is. And there's a few features on here that are missing compared to the other time lapse programs I um, had. But this one actually can see the camera that's connected to the server, unlike the first one I tried. And yeah, well, there we go. The camera is there. Now, the preview window is a bit squished. That's not a problem. You can stretch it out. And it's, it's only a preview window. You set the resolution in this window here to what you've got. And I'm using HD. I'm using 1080, 1920 by 1080, as that's kind of like the base of what I do most of my videos at. In also in here is where you do the settings for the webcam, which is unfortunate because you can only change these settings whilst doing the recording. This preview only uh, shows up whilst you are actually taking captures. And another thing that's unfortunate is that if you want to adjust any of these settings, you have to adjust it, click OK, and then have a look what it's like because this preview doesn't update with those new settings until you close it. So if you don't know exactly what you want to change it to, you get change the saturation to 63, click OK it. No, that's not enough. 64, OK it. Uh, maybe we need to go up a bit more. It is a little bit frustrating. But once I got the camera set up how I wanted it to and the lighting, this actually just works quite nicely. We can view the frames in a folder, and you can see here that I've been printing some other things. So there's, there's some previews of some stuff that's going on. And the actual image quality through a webcam is not too bad. Uh, I think if we had a proper camera, we would get a better image. But this is a snapshot in a video, and it doesn't necessarily need to be perfectly crisp. The kind of frame rate of the, the pictures coming through the video, will, well, that should resolve the issue. Now you can see in this still that I've got here of this print that I was doing, that in the background I'm not there. There's a little sheet. And what I decided was is that um, when I was doing prints, having me in the background moving around the room and all that sort of thing didn't provide a good background and it also just kind of distracted from the print. So I've got a little black sheet that I just hang on the shelf. And that does the job quite nicely. I don't know if I'll move to a more permanent solution or a better solution, but to be honest, just a little black sheet hanging on that shelf does the job quite nicely. So there we go. It's Whilst it's running, it does the captures. And once it's finished the captures, you can, you can either manually close it like this, you just close the stop the capture and it just closes off, and then you can convert to video. Now the default's 15 frames per second, uh, which means that every 10 seconds you are creating one frame for a fifteenth of a video. So, yeah, that, that is pretty slow. But using my editing software, I can speed up these videos. And I'd rather have it so that I've got a frame rate of 15 frames a second and then speed it up more afterwards rather than have the time lapse recorded too fast in the first place. So I haven't got any of these right here, but I will show you some of the videos uh, that I did during my testing and some that I've done since, just to show you how it looks uh, in a moment. Uh, but the only problem with this piece of software, really, was there's no way to automatically stop it. There's no scheduling. There's no, like, stop capture after so long. So uh, what I did is I wrote a little VB script. So this little script kills this program. Uh, there's a bit of setup, and then there's this bit here, which goes on this computer, looks at what's running, and then tries to close timelapse.exe. And it works, sort of, because when you're actually doing a time lapse, there's two windows open, and they actually come up as separate tasks. Uh, so what we do is we kill one of them, wait five seconds, and then kill the other. And we actually just use Windows Task Scheduler. So if I go Task Scheduler... We use Task Scheduler to actually kill this. This is just built in in Windows, and there's a stop webcam task here. And the trigger for the webcam task will be the time that I decide. So I'll think, okay, this print's going to take 10 hours. I'll look at the time, probably write down 11 hours, set the date and time to the right date and time that I want the, the capture to stop. And then 
uh, the action is just to run this bit of code and it works it works really well it's a little bodge it's a little hack but it does the job when that script runs it kills both of these I think I can demonstrate it now like this let's see will it work you oh, there we go there's one is it gonna close the other or there we go yes yeah, so the script works brilliantly to close that and because we're not recording video we're capturing frames those frames are fine even if you just kill the application at any point and then we can come back in the morning and do the video so there we go that's how I set up the webcam and the software and the script required let's have a look at some So there we go folks, I managed to do some time-lapse videos and I'm able to monitor my printer through a remote desktop connection. I did it mostly with equipment and bits that I already had and I only had to pay for a cheap LED light and I did it with free software as well using a little bit of coding to fill in a little gap where I could do with a feature that didn't exist. So I'm very happy with that. Now, I'm not really happy with the quality of the videos that are coming out of it. I feel we can do much better. But based on the fact that I'm using existing stuff and free software, well, yeah, that's, that's not too bad. I don't want to have to be running uh, another system like a, a Raspberry Pi or something like that in addition to what's going on. The printer's running autonomously separately from everything, and for now I wanted to keep it that way. So having a separate monitoring system like this is working good. So there we go, folks. That's how I currently monitor and record my, uh, my 3D printer. If you've got thoughts and suggestions about ways that I could improve or upgrade the current system or a different system that I can move to, then feel free to pop it down in the comments and maybe in the future I will revisit this. But for now, let's crack on with some more 3D printing. I'll see you next time to see how that goes. Goodbye.